Hi, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I am going to discuss about transaction command in Splunk. First, I am going to talk about what is transaction. Transaction is a related group of events in a span of time. For example, in online store, if you click any online store application, the transaction happens from application to application server and then database server. So one transaction occurs in three different places. Another example of single website visit. When anyone clicks in any website, then it takes HTML code, JavaScript code, CSS files, images, etc. So in single click, it takes the different components. It's called a one kind of transaction. Now I am going to talk about transaction command. For transaction command, you need to write a search, then pipe, then transaction and field list. You can give multiple field here, field 1, field 2, field 3, etc. So here is the example. You can see three different components, application server, database, and any other server. And if any user clicks in application, then these three events or logs are generated in three different components. So here you can see there is one common ID 1001 in all three different events. You can write a search where you can get all logs or events from application server, database and any other server. You can use transaction command then field ID. It will combine all three different events in single event and it will group these three events based on ID field value. So here in this example, you can see how transaction command is used to group the events based on field values. So ID field values is same 1001 in all these three events. So it creates a group with these three events. So it creates single event with all three different events. Now I am giving one example here. So here you can see search index web source type access underscore combined pipe transaction product ID. This search group all events with same product ID value. Here you can see this is one single event and it contains all events with same product ID as a hyphen BVS hyphen 01. So you can see here this is the first event, this is the second event and this is the third event and all events are having same product ID and all events are combined in a single event. Highlight product ID will highlight the field name product ID in event. So you can see highlighted product ID here. Transaction commands generates two new fields, duration and event count. Duration field shows the difference between the timestamps of the first event and the last event in the transaction. And field event count shows the number of events in the transaction. So here you can see search and it generates two new fields duration and event count. Now I'm going to talk about constraints in transaction command. So you can give option or argument or constraint max span. With the max span option, you can apply and get maximum time between earliest and latest events in the transaction. So max span equal to 12M means the maximum difference between earliest and latest events will be 12 minutes. And if any event is after 12 minutes, then it will go to the next, next transaction. Default is minus one. That means there is no limit. You can use max pause option for maximum total time between events. So when you combine events in a one transaction, you can apply this constraint. And if the time difference between events is more than one minute, you can exclude by using this option. The default is minus one. That means there is no limit. You can use starts with option or constraint. And by using this, you can create a transaction where the first event start with this keyword. You can use starts with, with a keyword, like start with uh, some keyword name. And it will create a transaction where first events will start with this keyword. And in ends with constraint, you can give ends with equal to keyword. 
and it will create a transaction where last event will contain ends with keywords. You can also uh, use maximum events for a transaction by using max events option or constraint. Here is the example and in this search here you can see max events equal to 2 that means there can be a maximum 2 events in one transaction. So here you can see in output this is the first event and this is the second event in one transaction or in one single event and also in second event you can also see um, two events first event second event in a single transaction now i am going to talk about transaction versus stats command this is very very important concept and uh, it can be asked in the interview so you can use transaction where there are less than thousand events for each transaction and by default transaction command also shows or displays maximum count of thousand events but you can configure by using max underscore events underscore per underscore bucket option in limits.conf file you can use transaction command when you want to see events correlated together with a field and you can also group events with star or end values of events you can use start with and end with with keyword and you can get only those events in a transaction where start with and end with values occur and you can also group events within time limit by using max pause or max spam you should use stats command when there are more than thousand events for each group and you can also uh, use stats command when you want to group by a fill values for example, you want to group fields values by client IP, then use stats by client IP. And you can also use stats command when you want to see results in calculation. If you have choice to use transaction command or stats command, you should use stats command as stats command is faster and more efficient, especially for larger Splunk environment. So in this lecture, I discuss about transaction command, transaction versus stats command. Thank you for watching this video.